it should be slightly more. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm, I'm concerned about um, about the timing. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to quickly share the screen and then let's do this together. Let's see if we can get you started. Uh, it shouldn't be that because it turns out that the major hindrance is probably going to be the, the cleaning up of the data or making sense up of the data. The, the rest is trivial process, right? You shouldn't have to struggle. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. Hello, can you, can, you, can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. Yes. Okay, so I was saying that uh, if, you, if you look at uh, this data set here, you notice that the number of observations that are there, uh, total is 1,027, right? So it's mm -hmm. slightly above 400. And if you, were to, if you were to do a superficial analysis where you, you're trying to figure out how many subjects you have here because your interest, in fact, is, um, is, uh, is this column here, right? Where you have these, uh, these uh, uh, subjects that are separated by the equal sign because of the nature of how this data was extracted, right? Okay. So, so if you were to do an analysis based on the subjects, what you will realize is that, uh, what you will realize is that, uh, I'm just going to go all the way up to the end here. What you are uh, realize is that uh, you, have, you have quite a bit of data here, right? It's, it's, it has nothing, it's way beyond 400 actually. If we do a, um, if we do a, just a very basic uh, sort here so that we arrange this in descending order or something, you will notice that the entries that have subjects. Something strange. C can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, my microphone is acting up. You want to let me know in case um, okay. you won't be able to hear me so that I fix it. I don't know what's happening with the microphone. I just changed the USB um, port I was using. But I was saying, if you look at if if you look at this mm -hmm. characteristics of the subjects, you realize that uh, they exhibit some of the traits that we talked about when we are looking at some 
some sample um, some some sample uh, observations or some sample uh, digital objects from the UCT repository and, and the UNSA repository, we notice that uh, there's some digital objects that will have three tags, one tag, or even five tags. In fact, you can have observations that have 10 tags. And you can see this from this data set from UCT. Out of the 925, you know, 26, you notice that you have one one entry here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have quite a number here, one, two, three, about four of them here. Right. Mm -hmm. so in fact, you can you can you can do a very basic analysis here and just say, uh, let's say, uh, okay, to if it's uh, was possible to count this, but that's fine. Um, you can literally see that the, the number of entries that uh, have more than one tag, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do a count if, uh, it's, if this uh, contains equal sign or something. You count all something, you count if. Let's say if this Just say, uh, let's see if we can find this. Let's see if we can find. Uh, see if we can, I'm trying to see if we can figure out. Uh, if we can find an easier way of figuring out how many entries have uh, more than one subject. And so the easiest thing would be search actually might work for us. Search. Ah. Huh. I'm supposed to start with this, I guess. This is not a mutual one. That's fine. I'm sure something wrong with my the way I'm using these formulas, but maybe we can just say count if range of values here as a uh, nickel sign, I guess. Zero still. Okay, let's try and see if it's in the trigger expressions. Sorry, expressions. 
Oh, it's not the uh, count that's the trigger expression. It's between. There we go. Okay. So you notice that out of the out of um, out of these entries that we have here, out of the 925 entries, we have 305 of them. Um, 305 of them that have multiple apples, right? This is this is fine, and 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 I guess in our write up we might have to in the methodology itself, as you're explaining these results, you might have to highlight some of these things, right? The characteristics of the data set, for instance. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so if we have this information, then the the, the obvious question to ask is, um, I mean, what? What um, what we have to, to do, right? I mean, so as a starting point, uh, it's the usual stuff, right? So we would uh, just try and see if we can uh, from right here. I'll just uh, it's fine. I'll just uh, I don't want to mess up this thing here. So in here, I'll just uh, okay, I should probably go in projects academics. Uh, Okay. Hope you can still hear me and you can still see this. Yes, I can hear you and still see you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this file here. And then I will right. All right, so the, the usual stuff here we're saying we need to do that so we can increase the size there. Um, and so what we do is we start with the imports. Now what I would do with the imports is to make life a lot easier. I'll just uh, try and see if we can get some of the borrow things from here, I guess, to be much easier this way. What that could do this. All right, so what I'm trying to do here is to, oh, should I put into scripts? What I'm trying to do is just to get the, uh, the, the more important import statements. I don't want us to waste time looking at import statements. It's taking a bit of time, I'm not sure why. Okay, so what we'll do is just copy these imports, paste them here. We'll assume everything is fine here, support. And then the usual stuff you do now is uh, you want to be able to, uh, I guess I'll just call this step two here, right? Because we need to share this with you. Important. So then that step number two is uh, just remember this. Step number two is uh, want to be able to inspect the data set. And inspecting the data set is not really that hard. All we have to do is all the things you can do is uh, we just use a simple shell commands. Um, and at this point, I'm just going to. Oof, Go back in here. I'll copy the name of this thing because right. So this is what we want. I mean, but they're pipe separated, yes. yes. And I guess this is a bit too much, so just ten that uh, eight or something. Um, so this is what we're interested in. And and if you look at the structure of the data here, you notice that the first couple of records or some records do not have uh, entries that you want, right? We don't care about this, which is why the data cleaning process comes in. But if you look at this um, this record here, um, I don't know if we can uh, add it to count here. If you look at record number eight here, you'll notice that uh, the two, three, four, five, six, the the, the column column number six here, mm -hmm. right, has the things we want. This is what you're interested in. Yeah. And if you look at this entry here. You need to realize, right, that uh, this entry here has uh, has two subjects associated with it. So the task would be to split split this up into two, right? 
whatever brain arranger is, if you want to be a brain arranger that you'd be working with, would have to, in part, involve you splitting this up into, into two components. And in fact, at the end, the end goal here is for you to come up with some sort of, uh, some, some sort of vector that will have uh, all the potential uh, C, CSS uh, concepts, CSS concepts. Um, um, and then you, you mark these things based on whether a particular observation has the marker that you're interested in. Right. Um, so again, if we are to go back to where we are here, um, let's say uh, after we, we inspect this header here, um, must let me know once we get to the stage where you, you've been having trouble, and then if we can then talk about that. And then uh, step number three would be we want to be able to, to pull out the things that we want, right? So just say, uh, uh, or extract uh, title, titles, abstracts, and subjects. And, and, and the reason we are we're extracting these things is we are interested in, this would be our output, the subjects, right? The multiple subjects. But our inputs are going to be the titles and the abstracts, because we know this. We know that for someone to be able to classify um, a, a text document, for instance, in the repository, what they do, they told you this when you did your interview sessions, they will read the title, they'll read the title, they'll read this, the abstract. So in whatever experiments we are conducting here, we want to be able to, um, to see if there's, uh, the, the titles have some sort of causal effect on what sort of output you get, if the abstract has an effect on the output you get, if the combination of the titles and the abstract, and this is all you're doing in terms of the experiments, right? So it's a combination, it's a title, right? Influ uh, to what extent do titles influence uh, the output of subjects? To what extent do abstract influence output? To what extent do this combination of things influence these things? And you know, you know these different combinations, three combinations here, you, you, you redo the whole thing using the different potential estimators that you're working with. But that's besides the point, and, and, and I know that part you're, you're already familiar with. Um, so plucking out what we need here shouldn't be that much of a problem here. We can just say this is var CS, uh, I'll call this CS objects. And I'll just say, I hope I've imported pandas PD, I'll say read with CSV. Um, then I will say, uh, I'll paste this thing, I need this. I'll paste this thing here. Then we do the usual stuff where we're saying uh, the separator here is going to be a type symbol, obviously. Um, hopefully that has worked. I think it has worked, but there's only one way to find out. Um, something else to do is to make life a lot easier. Um, we might have to rename this, some of these fields like the identifier with another bar here. So I'll just come here and I'll say, uh, rename uh, fields. Um, so just say, uh, Var UCT the objects. Um, well, this is going to be good to var UCT objects. I don't know if I'm still, or if you can still hear me or if you can still see this. Okay. Uh, you for some weird reason you're a bit low there on your end. I don't know if there's something wrong with your uh, micro microphone or something. So maybe as the next step, I'll, I'll, I'll call this the next step of this step three. But I'll say uh, basic data cleaning or something. Um, then for data cleaning, what we want to do is we want to be able to say uh, the, to, to avoid uh, whatever issues we might have here, we want to be able to say uh, the things like the, I'm trying to think here, I guess the uh, things like the that we expect to, be, to have now values that we're interested in, this would be the description, right? We're saying, uh, 
we expect the description to have potentially null value. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say fill in it, right? And then just say value is equal to, we just replace, if, if the title is now, we want it to be an empty string. It'd be a lot easier for us to, let me just, just to, um, just to replacement in place so that we don't have to recreate new data frames. We'll do the same thing for um, the description, which is abstracts. Do the same thing for the subjects. In case we have now subjects, we do have entries that have, have subjects, actually. Uh, so do that as well. Um, then I think now the time once we do this is uh, print entries. Time to... And just to be on itself, so just to check how many entries we have, we're just going to say uh, about that. I mean, we know it's probably going to be 1,027. This is what we're expecting here. Um, assuming nothing has gone wrong here. So 1,027 objects this is what we want. Um, and then what we can do now, right, is uh, uh, I guess something else we can do here is just uh, let's use these two columns. Just to check which columns we have, this is what we have here. And then at this at this stage we can we can then start uh, doing some really uh, additional basic exploration like uh, uh, filtering now entries for instance right so we could say if we want to do a comparison between this 1027 what, what I was doing in this spreadsheet doing this count is 305 for instance um, you could come here hello. Yes, I'm still here. Okay, we could, yes. we could come here and just say because we're interested in subjects, for instance, we could we yeah. could say how many subjects um, do we think how many subjects uh, perhaps do we um, or how many entries do we suspect? Uh, okay, how many entries? How many? Observe observations have of abstracts, for instance, right? We could start with titles because these are these are if these are going to be your inputs, you want to make sure that you are working with 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 observations that have inputs, right? Not so you filter out the stuff that has um, now titles and now abstracts. But just to get a sense of this, um, you'd say, uh, can we filter out uh, just put this? And we filter out uh, titles, I guess. We filter out uh, the things that uh, that don't have, I mean, that have titles, right? So where title is not equal to an empty string, for instance. Because remember, we did an in place, uh, replacement there, up there. Um, and, uh, okay. I think we forgot something else. I think it's because of subjects, because we don't have, we have subject, but no subjects. What else is there? It's, uh, you know, we have title. Title subject, you see the error here. Okay, something we're not doing right up here. Something we're not doing right, but what I will do is I'll push this in the next cell so that we 
don't pollute things. Just create a, just push this in the next cell. And it looks like it's, it should be able to work. We have trues and Ah, there we go. I think I see where it is. It's supposed to be here. Like that. Beautiful. So go back to where we were. Oops. Like so. And then just say we want that. That. Right. So. So we now see that uh, this is what we're interested in, right? The things that, if, if you look at the count here, the, so how many, how many observations have titles, right? You can use a title here. We see that, uh, I guess we can also just look at the first couple of entries. We're interested in these things here. Um, but what we need to do is to have a sense of how many of them we have. We can, uh, the superficial count here. So we see we have 1,009 of them have uh, have titles. Um, we can do the same for, for how many observations of abstracts. We can do the same thing here and just say uh, description. And uh, you notice that we have nine, 979 of them have, um, uh, have, have, have abstracts. And so what you need to do though, uh, uh, when you're doing this, when you're doing this uh, at your own time, is you want to make sure that whatever condition you're using, just it considers for you to, to, to be on the safe side, you want to make sure that you are, you are consistent in what you're doing. So filter out things that have both a title and an abstract. I don't know if I'm making sense. So in effect, what you would have to do is uh, use this line number nine from line number nine and say how many observations have both titles and abstracts or something. Um, and, and, and so for you to be able to count these things here, you'd have to, there should be a way of, uh, I believe there is. So this condition in here, I think you can use a Boolean operator, I think. So we could say and and uh, so the, the description and the title we both have to um, have uh, entries, right? So you see that uh, oh, this is not working out. Okay, let's see if uh, I do believe. Uh, all right, maybe these things need to be in parentheses or something. Doesn't matter, you can figure it out at your own time, I guess, if this fails. So there we go. So we have 979 of them. They have, um, they have, uh, they have both, they, they both have titles and that's right. And, and you have these instances. It's, it's if, you, if we ch try and check for things that have a description, but a title, but no description, you notice that we have, uh, it's supposed to be equal sign here. You notice that we have uh, 30 of them. Right? These are the things you're trying to avoid. So you don't want uh, observe. If I if I remove the count here, you don't want uh, this sort of situation here. Observe. Um, ah, uh, title and abstract. You don't want this, right? Hello. C can you still hear me? Hello, like. Yes, hi. C can you still hear me? Uh, Robert, can you still hear me? I'm not sure if you can. Yes, I've lost the connection. I can hear you now. Okay, great. So back to where we were. So you notice that uh, these are the things you're trying to avoid, right? So these entries, like if you look at this entry, for it doesn't have a description, doesn't have an abstract. And it's a choice you have to make, really. Um, but to be on the side, because you're going to use a combination of, you're going to look at title and isolation, abstract and isolation, combination of type and abstract, you want to be 
working with a consistent data set, right? So you filter out, you clean it up, and these are the things that have to go into the methodology, you explain what, what was done, this, this uh, selection criteria used for all these different things. Quite unfortunate that some entries were uploaded without descriptions. But, so once we do this, we have a firm sense that we now have uh, a set of uh, 979, right? Which is pretty decent. 979, uh, um, observations, right? And, uh, and I'm going to just say five here. This, and I'll change the condition here so that these are uh, both entries are not empty, right? So nine hundred seventy-nine is what you have. Um, all right. And I guess we can do a count here also. So let's check and see if you are still there. Can you still hear me? Hello? Uh, Robert, can you still hear me? Um, the line is breaking. Let me try to try to switch this one. Okay. Are you at work or you're at home? I'm wondering if it's my fault or if. No, I'm not at work. Oh, okay. Now it's fine. Now, now I can hear you from there. Okay. Um, all, right. Maybe, all right. Great. Uh, all right. So, so now that we've gotten this out of the way, we, we have a firm sense of what needs to be done. Um, the next thing to do now is to. Let me see if I can do another connection here. But the, the next step here is. Uh, I mean, if you want, I mean, as part of maybe I don't know if it's step four, step number five. What you could do is uh, uh, inspect some some sample, some sample observations or something, right? And so what we can do here is uh, just uh, get to a stage where we could save uh, UCT as objects. Um, and we can say. We could we could look at uh, instances where we pick a specific um, object, right? Because uh, it can, we can use this actually as an example. So we pick this as an example to see to have a sense of how an individual observation that has both a title and an abstract looks like. Right. So we would uh, we do that, and then I guess this would be used as a condition or something. But uh, CT. Sense objects. Um, then we can we can we can do this. Is what we want, but uh, we don't we don't want some of these fields here. Like for instance, we are not interested in in, in these other DC DC elements like the publisher relation. The only thing we're interested in here our X is and our Y, and and it turns out that our X um, our X is our X is the title and the abstract. And our Y is the subject. So all we need to do is that. Can I just uh, get my charge? I don't have a charge. Just, just give me a second. All right, uh, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. All right, so so we are saying then that uh, we have this uh, sort of arrangement where we want to, uh, I think I may have messed up this thing here. So we have this and we want to pull out, 
this is effectively what we we want. This is weird. It's supposed to be for the subject as well. I wonder why it's not there. Oh, there it's at below. Sorry, I transposed it. So we will have these two X's, the title and the description, but I don't have to transpose it because I have one entry here. But so the X, which is the title, another X, uh, X1 title, X2 is the abstract the description, and then the Y is the subject, right? And then at this stage, I mean, if you if you understand that the data set is structured like this, mm -hmm. you could say as the next step here, maybe step number six or something, you would say, uh, you want to be able to figure out how you go about um, splitting this thing. Now, obviously, when you get to that stage, you'd have assumed, you make the assumption that you'd have done this. Okay. Right, this part here where we're saying, uh, because we are interested, remember, we are interested in, we're interested in entries okay. that have a title and the description. Yes. Right? And so what we would do here is just say subject as well. In fact, in fact, you can go a step further and include another condition here and say you also want entries that have a subject. Right? So the subject must not be empty as well. And this is what we forgot to do here up there, right? Let's just try and do a simple count here and try and find out how many observations we're working with here. And subject is not empty as well. So we have, oh, it's still, oh, 897, right? So it's reducing. So you're working with 897 observations. You come here, this, these are the things you want, right? Things that have both the title, description, and the subject, yeah? And so at this stage, what you could do is maybe just overwrite this Thing here, so that you you are working your var UCTCS UC um, thing now. This is going to have the 897 observations. This is what you want. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, just to be on a safe side here, uh, count filtered data set. So you want these 897 observations. These are the things you'd be working with, right? Mm -hmm. um, so as the next step now, what you want to do is to try and see, the question is how exactly do we get to come up with a, um, a pre-processed pre-processed output of the subject? Because what you want is to have a, um, to have a, a Y that is is going to be very easy for you to uh, to convert into a form that your estimators will be able to, to understand, right? And so um, that's, it has to be ones and zeros, right? And so, uh, what you can do in this case is uh, you can take advantage of uh, a couple of things you can do here, but obvious one here is uh, if you look at uh, the subject here, um, we can, because this is this is equal, equal sign separated, you can say convert this to a string and then split this up using an equal sign or something, using an equal sign so that you have an, uh, I guess you have now an array, you, you have arrays instead of your equal sign separated entries, you have an array, comma separated, it's an array anyway, array of all the different subjects, right? Okay. You, you see this human centered computing information retrieval. Uh -huh. This has two, this has one, this has two. There'll be some that will have three or something. This is what you want. Now, so if this is what you want, then what you could do here is you could say, um, as part of, uh, I guess, going to be step number six still, you could say, just head here and just say, I want this to be too much, you just say five entries. Um, as a next step, you could say, uh, now would be the time to binarize this. And it's, I guess this would be like the final thing you'd be doing, right? You, if you figured out how to, how to, how to, to process the Ys here, because these are going to be trivial to, to work with, the titles, right? TFIDF representation, maybe term frequency representation, term frequency representation, these are all the, the different combinations they're going to be working with for TFIDF representation as X and, and Y, right? But, but the question is how exactly do you get to, uh, to represent the Y, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's quite simple. You, so you convert this into an array like so, and then as, as, as um, I guess as an, 
next step. So what we can do is just uh, showcase. I'm just going to showcase uh, a case where we are working with the subject, and then you can take it up from there. So, so we could say we have subjects, right? Okay. And uh, let's let's just try and work with a situation where we are we only have subjects here. So we'll just say uh, subjects is going to be equal to we want this. Remember the subject thing here is meant to is meant to be something similar to what you have here, right? So we are going to say the subject then is going to be this. I'm going to copy this across and put it here. Okay. So we have these subjects, right? But the thing, right? If you look at this, if you look at this variable here, okay. line number. Let's say number 43 here. What you immediately realize is that uh, this is not a data frame, right? This is the series, right? So for you to be able to play around with, with like the multi-level binarizer, for instance, I suppose, is you would have to, um, you'd have to convert this back into, um, into, it's a series, and this is how it looks like. This, you peek at three entries here. It's a series, but it's fine because this is what we want, right? Okay. But we will need to convert this into a data frame. So we can call this data frame. Then we'll say this is going to be equal to, um, I suppose, I don't know. Um, hmm. Trying to make sure that we have. Uh, this is some stage we may have lost the the subject, but that's fine also. All right, B. That's okay. thought this was, let me just try and see if we can, I'll just comment this out, let's try and see if this, um, this is a series, so we should be able to pick out something like uh, index, something beautiful. Okay, indices are a, 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 a different, I think, because we pluck them out, uh, that's fine though. Uh, but you want to make sure that you don't pollute them the way I have. You want these indices here to match the identifiers. The, the, the reason they don't match here is because at some stage, um, we filtered out here. We filtered out, uh, not here. At some stage, we decided to filter out the titles, and I think it's here. This, this is likely where the problem was. Mm -hmm. I think... So if we were to restart this, for instance, observe, we restart this, we get to the stage, we run that, we run that. Once we come here, okay. uh, if we skip, in fact, if we decide not to do this here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave this the way it was, so I get confused. If we decide to not filter out the, the, the columns here, mm -hmm. we should be able to we still have 897 here, but we should be able to um, to hopefully get a sort of situation where we have uh, and it's still the same. I was hoping we'd get to a stage where uh, we would have would have the a part here where we are not it's probably still a part where we are we are changing the variables in such a way that 
in such a way that uh, let's see, we need the identifier here. We change this so, such that um, we lose the we lose the. I wonder if we can come here and just do var ct cs objects. Lost it here though. It's just two of them here. I have them here. Where is the subject? And why this is if this is showing us the identifier it's here why is it not oh this is fine also anyways you can fix this later on I think it should be fine still but uh, we can still work with these indices. So we get the indices, right? This is what we have. And then we'll also have the value somewhere here, right? So you see TCS uh, subjects with values. And so these are the things you want to be working with. So, so your subjects have, have these things here, right? The index and the value, um, which is this index here and the corresponding value, which is an array. Uh, and so using that, that array, this this, this Y now, you can literally easily work with this Y now because all you have to do now is, uh, uh, as part of this, I don't know what step this is, but um, step number seven. So as part of step number seven, what you would do then is you'd say, uh, uh, you, you'd create, um, if I've already created a data frame, you'd create a data frame because you can't use the, the binarizer um, in this current state, so you'd have to, uh, I think we have subjects there created. Have we created the subjects? This is a, okay. So once we, we do this, we create the 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 uh, data frame, right? So what we want to do is we want to create data frame that uh, corresponds to to be able to correspond to. Um, trying to see here. So we'll just say identifier. We have because the series identifier, the series itself, right? This does not have uh, column headers, and and so you want to create them using this PD data frame. You see just now. I'm sure most of these things make sense. So uh, the subjects, and we'll call this uh, index. I think it should be there. Yes. Uh, by index, and then we want to create a subject column header as well. So we'll have var ct cs um, subjects uh, dot value. We count that just dot value. So ultimately, what we ultimately what we're interested in in creating is something that's similar to. Uh, I don't know why this pandas data from that I've just created here, doesn't want to work here, but um, ultimately this is what you're interested in, something similar, let's see what the error is. Uh, it's not value, it's values. So ultimately what you're interested in seeing is uh, is this sort of data frame. So we've converted our series to this data frame which has these columns, right? Um, so we can actually, from here we can uh, just say we are going to create a new data frame. We will call this data frame maybe via UCTCS uh, subjects uh, data frame. Um, and then we'll be working with this data frame now. Line number three and cell number 71 here. So this is what we'll be working with now. Now using this, we know that it's, uh, uh, it should be fairly intuitive for us to do this because it turns out that you have, uh, I don't know if you've looked at the multi-level multi-level binar, binarize or something. There should be some write-up on, on, on a, there we go, 
on, on scikit-learn on how this thing works. It's pretty trivial, right? I do encourage you to find time and look at this. Uh, you have to anyway because you need to reference these things. Um, all right, so once you do that, uh, the next step now is uh, to, I guess this would be like step number eight or something. I don't know if we've lost track of thing here, but let's see, just three of them here. So at step number eight, you can say we want now to come up with this binarizer, right? So just say, um, hmm. Multi-level binarizer is equal to multi, no, it won't work here because we still need to import it. So if you go here, you notice that there's, there's details on how you get to import this from scikit-learn, right? So multi-level, just copy this actually. Um, this is what you want here first, right? So about that. Um, if, so we'll call this multi-binarizer. Um, once we do that, we can then use this newly created data frame, right, to play around with the binarizer. Um, so we'll come here and we'll say, oh, um, because, because we can transform this, so what we need to do is create another data frame, right? Um, And we can say um, these details on how to do this actually here, feed transform. Yeah. So we can say data frame. Then we'll say we want to create. Um, so we'll create this data frame by fitting this. Thing we just created here, instance of multi, multi binarizer, right? We fit, fit and transform it. So fit and transform. And we fit and transform on this data from that we just created, right? Uh, we should be this. I think, but on a specific volume, which is subject. So here, we have, this is what we're fitting here, this array. I don't know if you're still following. Yeah, still following, yes. Yeah, and then for this to make sense, obviously you want to make sure that you include the columns also, right, using the same, uh, same thing here. This is big, I mean, so this is uh, ultimately what uh, something similar to, hmm. Wondering why this thing is saying uh, this. Did I run this? I think I did. There's something that's not. Uh, Mm -hmm. Wondering why this is saying there's no mm. There's a problem right here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a syntax error right here. So I'm just gonna close this up. All right, so this is what you want, right? I don't know if you, this makes sense here. So you notice that with this now, you can combine your TF-IDF representation for the title and the abstract and use these as, as your Ys. This is what you, you're supposed to work in towards. And in fact, you can probably just try and uh, attempt to transpose it. Um, yeah, we just uh, we'll pick uh, the first couple of entries, maybe 
10 records. So I've just transposed them, but you, you get a sense of what's happening here, the share scale of what's happening. Now, it's not immediately clear which uh, entries um, are applicable to what you're doing, but you can notice that there are some entries like software creation and management, for instance, you have ones, right? So what this means is, it's a horrible example here. Maybe what I can do further is, uh, or what we can do further here is just uh, configure this in such a way that uh, your, your pandas is able to spit out all the And spit out everything that we need, right? A hundred here because if you notice we have uh, 83, 83 rows, right? So we have 83 CCS concepts, okay. right? So in fact, the, the vector that you're working with, if you don't transpose this, right? What we're saying is if you decide not to transpose this, and let's say you look at uh, just two entries, this is the sort of metric, this is the sort of vector you're working with, right? Each of these are your CCS concepts here, right? Um, but we just need to transpose this. Um, but once we transpose this, and if we tell pandas to show us all the roles here, what you immediately notice is for some observations, this is just the first 10 observations, right? From zero up to nine here, 10 of them. You immediately notice that for some, so for this observation number nine, for instance, uh, it's tagged as computer graphics, right? Interestingly enough, there are some like uh, like this particular observation is tagged as being information systems and information systems applications. I don't know if you can see this. So where you have a one is is what it's tagged as, right? So it's software creation. So this is software creation, software management, software creation and software management. It's also uh, if we scroll up, it's also tagged as information systems application and information systems also, right? So this is this is what you're supposed to be doing here. Um, in fact, if we say we can go a step further here and just view your index number five here, hopefully, oof, I've already flipped it. Index number five. So you can you you can in fact you can you can go up here. Hopefully, if this hasn't been polluted here. You can go up here and get the the objects, the original objects, and filter, right? These are the ones. Uh, and filter, and then you can say, oh, one, two, number five. So just say six of them. We'll transpose them also. Not a bad idea. This thing that we're calling, I don't know if this, these are probably not, this is why I was, uh, this is why I was wanting to make sure that this, that this thing here was taking into account the IDs um, so that we could, you could, you could also, as you, whatever it is you're doing, you want to be able to match them with the original data frame, right? So that you, you can confirm actually, right? Uh, but it appears, it's, um, is a part where we've we've um, we're trying to avoid this. By the way, we want to make sure that the the indices that we're working with are the actual specific. Okay. Um, let's see here. Hmm, at what point are we splitting these things? Let's see here. It could be because of the filtering or something. I don't think so, because we have, we have the raw output here as well. Moving anything here because uh, we know that the uh, living file doesn't count. Eh? Hmm. This is 
一天。This one maybe doesn't doesn't help in any way, but just in case, let me just see if I can say uh, uh, some dummy condition. Maybe this might might help. Let's say subject not equal to empty string. Yeah. So I was, I was trying to see if like we could uh, make the index uh, equal to let's just see here. So if I So I, I was, I was, I'm trying to see if uh, if I could uh, see if, if I can specify the series index. And I think the the problem. Okay. It says it's okay to specify data from index, maybe. I don't know if you're still there. This is what we want here. Oh, one thing here. This is. Okay, let's try and see if we can alter things here. Uh, under five, what I would say here is I'll just say specify index, I'll just say this dot index is equal to five or something. So this is what I wanted, right? And then so we can come here and uh, what I wanted. And then we can get to a stage where we have the multi-binarized. And then uh, when you run this, you notice that your, uh, this is still, still from subject. It's unfortunate. It's not. It's not working here. I don't know why. Subject data frame. Let's try and see the subject. Subject data frame is here. Mm, let's see. is not what we want. This is still confusing. This is a... Uh... Actually, this is this is actually fine because... Uh, sorry, I was, I was confusing myself. This is actually fine because uh, we, we, we've, we've just selected the subject column. This is what we're working. So this is fine. But but what what you can immediately notice is that uh, it is fine. What you can immediately notice here is that uh, I only wish there was a way of uh, it is because we can use the we can use the the raw numbers here. So we can use these things here zero one all the way. 
So you can literally see that if we go back to this row number, I don't know if it was row number five, where we had uh, three labels associated with this thing. One, two, if you notice, three, three of them, right? We can come back here, right, and try and see it. So, but which observation, is it five or six? Five. It's five. We can literally come here and say, uh, well, which, if it's five, we can come here and say, well, which, I always confuse the I lock and, uh, uh, I don't know, five. This is, this is confusing because uh, if you look at this thing here, right? This is what we want. I don't know if you can see this. It's software systems. This is five, right? Software is number five here. What we can do here is we can say, we can still say, because this is what we want, we can still confirm this. We can, uh, we can come here and just say print, you print for us uh, a subject. So this is what we want, you see, you see, we had information systems, software creation and management and information systems. So if we come up here and go at number five here, you will notice that it's number five here. You will notice that uh, the entries associated with this are, all the way down here is information systems, information systems application, and software creation and management, right? This, this is what you're working towards really. And then, and then from here, then you can, you can just uh, do those superficial experimentation with your thing.